Hey, gentlemen. How we doing? What's up, folks? Awesome. How are y'all? Man, Ray and Jeff were correct. That music does pump you up. I was so excited to jump on with the two of you. I just want to welcome everyone back to the Teach Better 12-hour live event. My name is Joshua Stamper, and I'm so excited to be here with you all for this really important segment on an uh, important topic, which is social-emotional learning. And before we begin, I just want to welcome everyone to the segment, but then also to let you know that when you are watching, feel free to jump on the comment section and ask questions throughout the segment because we would love to answer any questions that you have. Or if there's a topic that we're talking about that you also have examples that you're doing within your classroom, on your school, in your district, make sure that you're sharing that out to everyone else so that they get that information also. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself real quick. I'm Joshua Stamper. I'm probably one of the newest members <laughs> to the Teach Better team. Um, I'm so excited to moderate um, this morning with these two amazing guests. Um, but before I introduce them, I not only am a part of the Teach Better team as the podcast manager, um, but I'm also a administrator um, at a middle school in the North Texas area. And then also I lead my own podcast, which is Aspire the Leadership Development Podcast. And so that's enough about me. I want to talk about you two gentlemen. So Hans, why don't you start us off? Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. So I'm so excited to, to be here with you guys today. Um, my name is Hans Apple. I'm a counselor. I've been a counselor for about 20 years. Uh, exclusively at the middle school level, live in uh, Eastern Washington. So it's about three hours uh, east of Seattle. Um, and I'm super passionate about education. I love talking SEL. So I'm, I'm totally jazzed to be here today with you guys. Um, in addition to that, I have a chance to be a speaker and I recently wrote a book called Award Winning Culture. Um, so I'm super proud about that. And then my wife and I run a podcast uh, called, same title, Award Winning Culture, where we dive into things like school culture and SEL and, and all things, uh, whole child, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been a, a super big passion project as well. And then uh, on top of that, I'm grateful to be the director of culture for the Teach Better team. So uh, lots of cool projects in the works with the Teach Better team. Um, and we may even tease one of those out today. We'll see. That's awesome. Trey, what about you? Can you introduce well, yourself real quick? And, sure, sure thing. In true educator fashion, we're wearing multiple hats. So I'm, <laughs> I'm first off grateful for being here. I've been um, on the live in and out all day. So it's been a pleasure to, to see the energy. You're right. At 12 hours seems like a long time, but the energy is amazing. So as for me, I have an education consultancy. We focus on adult SEL and just recently launched a platform, SEL Educators, that is dedicated to adult social emotional learning activities. So we've got several courses there for adults to develop their learning. And like the two of you gentlemen, I'm also a podcaster, the Dash Podcast. Uh, we feature educators every week that are solving problems for school communities mostly focusing on SEL, school leadership and diversity, equity, inclusion. And the third hat that I'll mention here is I'm a Dean of Students um, at a K-12 charter school here in rural South Carolina. That's awesome. And Trey, I actually wanna start with you because this Thursday, you're gonna be leading the mastery chat on a topic which is very similar about supporting teachers. And I know a lot of people when they talk about social emotional learning, they think about the student aspect and they really focus on that, which is important, but it's not the only thing, right? We should be looking at the teacher and the educator piece for social emotional learning. So what are some things that you're doing on your campus or what do you focus on regarding social emotional learning for educators? Absolutely. So, I mean, I appreciate the question. And once more, I'm excited that adult SEL has become 
uh, more of a trend this year in SEL as a whole. It seems like it's becoming more of a standard. So I actually got my start in um, 2017. I started my consultancy and my first um, my first opportunity was to be an emotional coach for teachers. So right from there, I recognized when I was walking into classrooms and doing observations that um, teachers were responding versus reacting. And what that told me was there was some emotional intelligence that was missing. I actually just got Mark Brackett's book, uh, Permission to Feel, and just the opening chapter says a lot about how, yes, we know we have permission to feel, but we often just brush those under the rug. So as teachers, we, we teach who we are. And when you come into a classroom and you're delivering your lesson or whatever, you're giving those kids everything that's inside of you. And hopefully that's a good thing, but it, it isn't always that way. So what we've done is, is put together opportunities. Um, I think our first year was on a quarterly basis. We'd have two hour PDs focused on DISC assessments. So we've been focusing on relationships and communication to better, to have more um, constructive PLC teams and also implementing SEL in the classroom. So th there's a, a whole spiral that I can go down to in terms of what we're doing, but I, I, I'll leave right there and see what other direction we wanna go from, from there. Yeah, what about you, Hans? Because I know as a counselor, you're not only ser serving your students, but also your staff. So what are some things that you're doing to help the emotional needs of, of your peers and your staff members? You know, I think one of the biggest things that has really been an epiphany for me during this pandemic is that we have to lead through modeling. Um, I, I think that is that has become such a focal point for my own work. And, and I'll just share a quick story. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. I haven't shared this story in any uh, format before, but I, uh, so I wrote a book recently called Award-Winning Culture, which is all about SEL. And when you write a book, one of the things you get to do is you go out, get to go out and promote it. And so you get to do a lot of interviews and things. And I did an interview a while back uh, for a podcast. I won't share the, the name of the podcast, but um, it was super cool because the host was totally into SEL. She really was knowledgeable. She had read my book. She, you know, had a lot of in-depth questions. She was just ready to dive in. The challenge for her was the technology piece. She was fairly new to, to podcasting in just that space. And so I would call it a growth area for her. And so the day of the recording, you know, we were set to get started and literally every tech problem that could appear, <laughs> and you guys know as podcasters, there's a bunch, yes. <laughs> every, every problem like happened, right? So we had to log in and out. She hadn't done an update. The Wi-Fi went down, like everything you can imagine. It was like a comedy of errors. And we're finally ready to start uh, the interview. And she looks at me and she says, Hans, can I have just one minute? And I'm like, yeah. And in, in my head, I'm thinking, uh oh, now what's wrong? <laughs> but she closes her eyes and she takes maybe two minutes total. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. does some deep breathing. Yeah. And you guys know, like when you're on a Zoom, you're basically just staring at the other person. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like you're side by side. So I'm watching her for two minutes with her eyes closed before we start this interview. And she's just practicing SEL live in front of me. And at the end of it, she gets done and she does this little quick positive mantra self-talk. She pops open her eyes and she's like, all right, are you ready to record? And we spent, and we the, spent the next, next we, we spent the next hour basically, you know, talking SEL. But after that, we spent probably another 30 minutes talking about what I saw, what I witnessed and what mm -hmm. I was, was blown away by which was really leaning into that vulnerability. I mean, here's a person that was excited about the interview. Like, you know, she's trying to impress, like, you know, she's done all of her research. And, you know, she, in that moment, she's totally, uh, you know, transparent with, hey, I need to collect my thoughts. I need to get right here. And it's really caused me to do a lot of reflection over the last couple months. Would I be willing, would I be willing to be that vulnerable? Right, mm -hmm. and put myself out there and go, okay, yeah, we know all the SEL stuff, right? We know all the buzzwords <laughs> and all the practices, but then when it comes time in the moment to really do that, I don't know. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts because that's really resonated with me. I mean, I think that's that's that is what SEL is for. You know, I know yep. we have, like you mentioned, the names and the acronyms and all that, but what does it look like in practice and application? That's how simple it is. You know, so imagine if instead of it being in front of you as a 
podcast guest, what if it was in front of her classroom? And then how does that teach our kids about failure, about winning, about patience? It, there's so many of those self self management, I guess, would be the, the specific skill to um, the castle competencies. But I, I think that's awesome. And, you know, Brene Brown, um, vulnerability researcher, says that, you know, a lot of times we are afraid to be vulnerable because we think it we think other people will look at us as weak, as soft, as a, a coward. But when you're able to be courageous like that and you are vulnerable, it, it comes off as courageous, as strong. And it makes people like you saying right now, it, it spreads and, and lifts people up to continue to try to be a better version of themselves. Yeah, I love that story, Hans. I mean, the actions are are speaking louder than the words, right? Because we, we talk about a lot, but you know, we want our students to regulate their own emotions. However, a lot of times the adults in the building aren't able to do that and model that themselves. So what better way to do that than to actually show them in our actions than not just use our words. So um, I think that's a fantastic story and one that really is a perfect segue to really what I want to get to also, which is the student component, right? So what are you all doing on your campus with your students to tap into the, the social emotional learning aspect? Yeah, I think there's... Um that's a great question. I know when I got into education or and even SEL, I knew it as emotional intelligence. So I was fortunate to join a school that had already adopted um, multiple different positive action curriculum, uh, top 20 teens. There was different curriculums, but as I got in deeper, I found CASEL and the school-wide guide to implementation, to SEL implementation. And that really changed the whole framework because it's one thing to have a standalone curriculum, but when that curriculum can embody your school community, I think that's where we really see the long-term results. So we're in our second year of implementation of the Lions Quest program, which is a CASEL evidence-based program, and we have it for K through 12. So every morning kids are, they their homeroom is a 25 minute, SEL block, I already mentioned for teachers, we have a monthly PLC um, where they're focused on SEL. And, and our goal is to implement one lesson a week, not quite at the place of fully integrating into academics, but that, that's going to come along the process. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just piggyback off the end because I think, I think that's where it really gets special, isn't it? When we take it from just being a curriculum, a standalone thing on a Friday for 30 minutes, and then it really becomes embedded into everything we do, right? It's part of the morning announcements. It's part of the assemblies. It's part of the hiring practices. It's it's literally part of like the entire fabric of the school. And I think that's that's what we've tried to do at our school. I think um, that's a big you know a big project, and it's it's taken us a number of years to kind of get to that point. It's something I write about in the book, and um, I, I love it. I I, I think. I love the idea of, of not just talking SEL, not just saying this is what mindfulness looks like, but actually, you know, doing it in real time. Not just, not just saying, hey, you know, let, let's be kind to one another. Let's not bully, you know, all these kinds of things. You know, I, I, I always uh, challenge some of the, like the random acts of kindness weeks and things like that. Not that they're not good, but that I think we can do so much better. Mm -hmm. I think we can really be intentional in making that a part of every single day throughout the entire year. What do you guys uh, think? Uh, you're right. You're, yes. you're, you're 100 percent right. I mean, I think even because it is uh, SEL is not new. So I, I struggle with saying that it's it's. <laughs> been around since the 70s, formalized in 80s, 90s. It's not new, but we're just figuring it out. So I think from that standpoint, you're you're 100% right. It's, it's not just the, the classroom, school community. That's your parents, that's your admin, that's your teachers, that's your students. Um, I, I know one thing I'm looking forward to as well, like you mentioned, taking that next step. This semester, we expanded our student government to be just four or five students to be having grade level ambassadors. And the, the idea behind that was like, we, we've got to give these kids more opportunities to enhance their voice and, and be more engaged. They're on the computer all day. They're at home alone all day. So how can we develop a newsletter or a Zoom night or game nights? I had a high school student tell me uh, that there was two students they just did not like. And they got on a video game and they played Fortnite for three hours. And next thing you know, they were, you know, good friends and whatnot. So I think that that comes from that made me feel good because I know that we've been practicing those skills since she was in eighth grade. And now that you're in 11th grade, it's, it's starting to pay off and you're starting to see 
that social awareness and, and relationship skills build up. But but I agree with what you said to start that we're um, at a place where we have to expand just beyond. It's not just the curriculum. That that's not enough. It's a it's a lifestyle in the way that you are living. I yeah. love the I love the leadership piece that you, that you, you touch on there because uh, I think so often we undersell kids, don't we? Like, mm-hmm. like, like like we it's like okay, we've got this many leaders or we've got this many people that are really bought into it. You know, the the reality is they all want to go to an amazing school. They all want to learn. They all are curious, right? They all want to impact the world. And yeah. how they're going to do that it looks different, right? But I, I think when we build those skills, it's so fun to watch that arc as as they really like, you know, live that into practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I know one of the, oh, go ahead, Josh. I'm no, I'm sorry. Talk. I want to touch on the, <laughs> no, I want to touch on the leadership piece because Hans, you talk about that a lot too, is, you know, we think of social emotional learning and of only um, with the emotional health piece, but also leadership is, you know, in character is a component of that. Um, so what do you do Hans to, to kind of embed the, the student leadership with the practices that you have on your school? Yeah, there's a number of different things. Um, I'll just touch on one quick one that um, I know you and I have talked about, Josh. We do a a student-led podcast where it's basically a leadership focus where kids get to interview um, speakers and authors and, and, you know, people all over the, the world, really, and then share those with our community and beyond. And so, you know, they're able to dig in on topics like anxiety and mental health and self harm and technology and parenting strategies and all kinds of things that that teens really want to talk about. And uh, I know when we started that, we got a lot of pushback. There was a lot of concern, like, I don't know if kids can handle that. I don't know if they're going to be able to, you know, take on some of this. And kind of like Trey was saying, I mean, they're just capable of so much more than than we give them credit for. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, you know, looking for those opportunities in your school, whether it's a blog, you know, Trey mentioned a newsletter they're starting, you know, whatever we can do to put that out there, um, to really let kids run with it. I think that's amazing. We've got to give the kids opportunities to grow, lead and experience. That's, that's like a intrinsic motivation for me, but I, I think that there's a lot of times a disconnect between the adults on campus and the students. And the higher up, it seems like you go in a school level, the more disconnected you get. So I'm grateful to still be at a place where I can work directly with the kids. And, and um, I mentioned the student government in the newsletter. We also plan to have the kids lead some college and career readiness sessions. Uh, we've got a, um, a platform we use, Occupation Information System, and it already has lesson plans laid out. So I want to walk through how to facilitate that lesson with them and let them deliver that message about college and career readiness to their middle school cohorts. And then our ambassador program last year that we did, and obviously not this year, every Wednesday we had an assembly. And instead of having a whole group assembly, we had those same eighth to 11th grade leaders lead breakout sessions with all of our K-12 grades. That was a reinforcement or enrichment activity from the um, SEL curriculum. So, you know, trying to bring things full circle is, um, I think is important for us with the kids in particular. And gentlemen, I've seen a lot of comments here of like, I wish my district had SEL, you know, importance or focus. And so um, for maybe someone that's watching right now and they're thinking, okay, I know SEL has been something, Trey, you said this, right? It's, it's been in, uh, going on since the 70s, right, as a focus. But there's still a lot of schools that don't have this implemented and embedded within every decision making, like Hans was saying. It's more of just a, a standoff, one event here, one event there, one initiative. So for those who are looking to start a social emotional learning um, piece, you know, maybe it's a curriculum or what's maybe one step to get this, the process started for a campus. Hans, I'll let you go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. So w- w- I think one thing that I would suggest is really putting together a like-minded team, uh, a group of people in, in your building that are passionate about this work. There are there are people there, whether they're students, whether they're parents, whether they're staff, somebody in your school community wants to do this work just as badly as you do. And so I would I would start with, okay, can we get a team together that that is interested in this and, and that really wants to pursue this? Um, as far as implementation, when we start looking into implementation science, we really know that it takes three to five years to change culture, right? And um, 
so I always talk in terms of year zero. So mm-hmm. year zero being what are you going to do the year before you really start implementing? Because there, there's a lot of process. You know, one of the things that Trey talks a lot about is the training piece of adults. That isn't something you don't just jump at the curriculum and just dive in and go, mm-hmm. we're going to wing it. Right. Because that's going to fail. So there is this training piece. You want to have, you know, some book studies ahead of time. You want to have opportunities to, to show students and parents what the curriculum might look like, you know, to start just kind of weaning towards, um, you know, this, this overarching change. Um, so I think that's huge. I also wanted to really quickly touch on something that Trey said earlier about uh, the more uh, removed you are from the classroom, the more removed you are a lot of times from the kids and, and the experiences. And I think that kind of ties into this. I think the further we get away uh, from the, the direct contact with kids, the harder it is, I think, for uh, I'll just use your words, the higher ups, you know, the, the, the folks that have uh, the title of leader to see how important whole child SEL work is. And so one thing that I would push back on is it's really critical for leaders to get into classrooms. It's really Mm. critical to to be the one that's there, um, you know, a part of the lessons. So, you know, if you've got a lesson on a Friday, it shouldn't just be the teacher doing that. You know, it should be your counselor, your librarian, your paraprofessional, uh, obviously your administration, you really want to create a common language amongst your entire school. And so I, I think, yeah, amen. Right. And I, so I think as, as that common language starts to, to steep out, you get more and more people that are willing to buy in. Mm-hmm. Hans, man, you're, you are, you're spot on with, with everything that you're, you're saying right there, that, that culture piece, you know, in that, that gap when we look at, I was just looking at um, Ed Week Market Brief before we started, and I was looking at what kind of PD teachers were looking for, what they said at that level. And SEL was like number nine, 10 on it, but it, they had environmental student engagement, but the SEL was way below that. It's the same thing. You know what? Yeah, you, yeah. You, this, you can't just say, I want to save school environment and not have a whole systematic approach that goes with it. it it's not going to work. You can't, you can't put a puzzle together with missing pieces. That's why they call SEL the missing piece. Um, and, and I'll go. So you started at Heinz with starting an SEL team. I, I'll give my vulnerable moment here. I'm a ready, I'm, I'm a go getter. And I often don't wait for nothing. Once you give me a task, I'm just trying to get it done. And so I started the process of implementing by myself and um, it backfired. I mean, in, in the simplest terms, you know, I chose the curriculum in a silo. I completed some of the rubrics in a silo. And then I presented it after I had done the research to our team to, yeah, I presented it to our school after I had done my own research, but it's taken a while to get the buy-in from there. So here we are in year two, we've got much better structure, much better strategy. I've grown, they've grown. We're in a way better place now. And to that point, I don't know how familiar everybody is with CASEL, the Collaborative Academic for SEL. So I'm not going to assume. If you go to, and I shared it um, in our private chat here, if you go to schoolwideguide.castle.org, that it literally will walk you through the process of SEL implementation, starting with developing your team. It's a three-step process and it's expanded. It's a five-step process that literally covers how to build your team, how to get your Um, out of school team partners involved, how to find an evidence-based curriculum, how to train your adults, how to have continuous improvement. And there's resources, over a hundred resources in there that help you actually complete these steps. So um, it's been a saving grace for me. And one of the difficult pieces of SEL is finding that value or the metric value and the data and whatnot, or directly being able to attribute to it. But there's there's also a rubric in that school-wide guide that helps you understand where you are in terms of implementation. It's on a four point scale. If we were on level two or three, in most cases last year, we're more at a three or four this year. And it, that really helps us um, move forward there. So Castle is always my go-to and I'm working on a, um, I guess a course to show you how to use that guide. I know it walks you through it in, um, uh, what would be the word? It's not a video format. You just got to click the buttons and read, but making it more of a digital experience is something that I'll be working on as well. It's awesome. And so the link that Trey was talking about, um, that was in the comment section, but then also the teach better team put it on their Facebook page in the comment section also. So, um, it's there on the screen for anyone that's interested. Um, 
I agree with you guys completely as an administrator. Um, I didn't want to make it a top down um, movement. So I created a relationship action team is what we called it. And mm -hmm. it was all about learning and Hans, you are spot on. It's taken us years <laughs> to embed that into our culture. Um, but now, you know, being on year three, I've seen it grown so much and, and it is so much more powerful for the teachers to own it and to learn as a team um, about the process and what it can bring to our campus and to our students. Instead of me just saying, you have to do it. It's about us learning and, and growing um, that initiative together. So I couldn't agree more. Um, we are running out of time, um, which is amazing because it feels like I just jumped on with you guys. Um, but if you guys miss it, you definitely need to go back to Lindsay Titus's um, segment. She talked about serving others as educators. That's what we constantly do. And um, unfortunately, we are pouring out of our cup every single day. And a lot of times we're not filling our own. So um, if you guys just real quick with the time remaining, just talk about maybe something that you do for a self health care piece um, that you do maybe daily, weekly to kind of fill your cup and help your social emotional um, component. Yeah. Go ahead, Hans. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I there's two things that really come to mind for me. I, I start kind of every morning the same way. I, I write in a joy journal, uh, which I started a number of years ago. Um, and it's essentially just uh, short uh, gratitude type thing. I, I really try not to judge anything that I write. It's just like, I just get it out. Um, and so that's a fun thing. Um, and then I, I always go on a dog walk. And, and so there's that exercise piece where we go three to five miles pretty much every morning. Um, it's just a little bit of family time, but it, it helps kind of center me and get me going to start the day. And I, I just don't feel like myself if I don't do those two things. I, I'm, I'm we're almost on the same page there. The, these journals have been my saving grace. I use best self journals um, out of UK and they usually come in um, a 90 day version, but now I use a, a six month version. So just getting able to write, though, though writing, if it's something that's positive, it helps me make that vision reality, um, write the vision and make it plain. I just looked at my business goals from four years ago and it's crazy how um, close we are to being in the same place. And then for negative thoughts, when I put those on paper, that's where they stay. After I write it down, I'm not carrying that thought with me. Um, I think a, a third component of that journaling is I am very spontaneous and I don't like planning organization or details. So the, the journal is what makes sure that I'm doing the right things every day. And, and similar to what you said about going on a walk, I try to hit the gym um, mostly every day if I can. And I, that makes me feel better if I take a day off. So those would be um, my two as well. Yeah, exercise is key. Um, definitely, I feel for myself, creation too. You know, the conception piece, I feel like I consume a lot. Um, that's just kind of a, a habit of mine consistently. <laughs> so I need to then take all of the things that I've been learning and, and find a way to, to create. And that gives me a peace of mind. I know it's for some, it sounds like more work, um, but the passion project piece is allowing me to pour out um, in, in a different area. And, and I feel alive when I do that. So uh, maybe it's the artist in me. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but that is definitely um, something that I need to do on a daily basis um, for my own mental health. And maybe that's just a flush out the creativity that's that's inside my brain. But um, <laughs> last last you know minute that we've got here, um, is there any you know pieces that you want to say um, you know to our viewers as far as social emotional learning and maybe um, something that um, is an important piece that maybe we haven't spoken about today. Just something maybe. Quick. I've got one that's been in my head the whole time, but just had to do it. Right. About the adult, excuse me, teacher preparation programs. There's only one state that has a teacher preparation program that covers at least four of the Castle Five SEO competencies. That means every other state, every other school, every other teacher is going into the classroom with having minimal experience, one, two, maybe three SEL competencies in their tool bag, and then we're asking you to lead. So, so this is a, a serious to me, and I think that's really important to understand the value of knowing yourself, and that's all I'll say. I love that. Um, I, I'll just end with, you know, I think in teachers in their hearts, they really know this work is important and it matters. And, and I guess I would challenge the teachers that are watching to, uh, you know, put all the other stuff aside 
and really do what you know is right for kids. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that is content and sometimes that is getting away from content. And sometimes that is really focusing mm -hmm. on the relationships and, and making sure that everybody's okay. And I think that has become super crystal clear right now in this global pandemic, but I think we need to continue that. This is just the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'll just leave. The last comment I'll say is to get knowledge to the brain, we have to go through the heart. So social emotional learning is that piece um, to get knowledge to the brain. So um, I love the conversation that we had today. Mm -hmm. I wish we could go longer. I really do because <laughs> I love talking to you too. Um, but I want to thank you, Hans and Trey, uh, for being on this segment with me. Um, our 12 hour live event continues next with the most anticipated segment. I know they've been talking about all morning with the ambassador takeover. So um, again, thank you gentlemen um, so much for, for being on the segment on SEL. My pleasure. <laughs>